it's a holistic experience if you want to put it that way. Uh, it's just the the kind of thought of really it makes you feel alive out there when you're you know it sounds kind of corny but uh, and I think people who ride understand that that it's it's a total package your experience that there are many little things that come together in that experience that you really enjoy it's it's the physical activity the getting in the, the mental zone of doing it uh, meeting people along the way I've met so many neat people over the years by riding to work and I've developed friendships from that uh, just this morning when I was riding in I was uh, noticing the uh, bush loop and blooming on the causeway and, you know and then during the winter time you've got the waterfowl and the, the refuge adjacent to the causeway so there are days when I'm seeing flocks of geese and ducks and, and things like that and you know, every day is different, and I really, you know, it just makes you feel that it's great to be alive. The symbol of the city of Davis, California, is the bicycle. Davis was the first city to use bicycle lanes in the country, and in 2005, Davis received the first platinum award by the League of American Bicyclists. Davis has a population of 65,000 people. Many residents work at the University of California, Davis. A substantial number of Davis residents work in and around the nearby state capital of Sacramento. Davis is located approximately 15 miles from downtown Sacramento, but the vast majority of commuters drive to work and back to their platinum bike city alone in their cars. Many of them may be willing to bike to work, but abandon the idea when they start to consider all the details they would have to work out in order to successfully commute by bike. In April 2008, an action research team from the Education for Sustainable Living program at the University of California, Davis, conducted a survey of Davis residents who drive to work in Sacramento. When asked why they didn't commute to work by bicycle, 47% of the respondents cited time issues, such as taking too much time in their day, getting up too early, or juggling a variable work schedule. 27% cited logistical issues, such as too much stuff to carry or the need for shower facilities, and 26% stated that the distance from home to work was too far. This program is designed to address those issues and explain how easy it is to commute from Davis to Sacramento. To get to Sacramento from Davis, you will need to get to the Yolo Causeway. From the north, you can take Covell to where Mace Boulevard intersects with County Road 32A, then take County Road 32A to the on-ramp to the Yolo Causeway bike path. From downtown Davis, you can take 2nd Street East to Mace Boulevard, where 2nd Street turns into County Road 32A. From the west, you can get to the old Route 40 bike path from Olive Drive off of Richards Boulevard, and that will take you straight to County Road 32A at the railroad crossing at County Road 105. From the south, you can take the Dave Pels overcrossing to Faraday Avenue, across to 2nd Street to join up with the County Road 32A at Mace Boulevard, or you could bike up and over the Mace Boulevard overpass, but use caution here because this is a high traffic area with several busy intersections during commute hours. Also from the south, you could take East Childs Road, but beware that it has no bike lanes and the poor condition of this road surface makes for a very rough ride and will wear out your tires. Once you get past the Yolo Causeway, you will exit down a ramp on a bike path that takes you behind the gas stations to a crosswalk across West Capitol Boulevard. When it's safe, you cross to the other side of West Capitol Boulevard and head east. West Capitol Boulevard has nice wide bike lanes in both directions and the traffic is usually quite light. There are four stoplights on West Capitol Boulevard, Harbor Boulevard, Poplar, West Acre Road, and Jefferson Boulevard. All of these lights have pedestrian push buttons that will accelerate the light to change. West Capitol turns right into Garden Street where you will make a left turn that will take you right over the Tower Bridge onto Capitol Mall. There you are in downtown Sacramento. 
Sacramento has lots of one-way streets with ample bike lanes, but be careful, you will encounter more cars in downtown Sacramento than anywhere else on your entire commute, so stay alert. In their own words, Davis bicycle commuters explain how they have handled time, logistics, and distance in order to commute by bike to Sacramento. In the end, it works out extreme, extremely well because I'm done with my workout for the day. And so I don't have to go out in the evening and try and make time to, do, to get to the gym or to go swimming or run or whatever you might do. I'm, I'm done with my workout, I've gotten to work, I've gotten home, and it's all packaged up very neatly. If I take the bus to work, um, I would have to walk from my, my house to the bus, wait for the bus, and walk from the bus stop to my office. That takes me about an hour. If I ride from my house to, the, to work, it takes me about an hour. If I drive my car, it takes less than an hour unless I buy, if I buy um, parking. But if I don't buy parking, it takes an hour to find the parking spot, you know, driving around looking for the parking spot and then walking back from the parking spot to the office. So no matter which way I commute, the commute commitment is about an hour for me at this point. Uh, I found that I'm penny wise and pound foolish with my time if I cut out exercise uh, to save time for work or to save time for other things. It's a very uh, short term gain. But after a, a while, you're not as productive, you're not as energetic, uh, and, and you don't have the opportunities to work out whatever tensions or difficulties there are with your work. So I find that the time is, comes back to me in improved uh, productivity and energy and focus at the office and greater relaxation. Uh, I sleep better and, and, and life is better. So I think you have to make the time. In fact, I've, I've actually ridden um, to work, and, and I do this a lot. I think about um, some of the projects I'm working on or a brief that I'm writing or something, and I, and I get in this sort of state of mind where I can really focus on the issues that I'm working on, and I actually can write things in my head, so when I get to work, I just spit them out on paper. Because I arrived kind of energized, um, I tend to be a heck of a lot more productive in the hours I have in the office. So I'm not losing any time at all by taking the time to commute by bicycle. The biggest deal when I first started uh, commuting was what to bring and thinking that out. And so what I did was I wrote a list of all the things. I really put some thought into it before I, I started to commute. And I, and I wrote a list of all of the things I needed in terms of what clothes I wear, uh, what what sort of things I need in terms of like my calendar and my wallet and my keys and that kind of stuff. And then I thought in terms of what equipment do I need? Spare tires, uh, tire tubes, tools, uh, lights in case I have to work late, you know, a bike light. Um, and my lunch. And you think through your day and you have to be fairly conscious of, okay, what do I do in a day and what do I need and what do I bring from home? After that, then, you start looking to see, well, what are the things I can leave at work so that, you know, on a weekend, I'll drive this stuff in, and it's waiting for me so I don't have to haul it on my bike. So in my office over here, I've got, a, I've got my closet. I have two sport coats, two slacks, five shirts, five ties, so I'm always ready. I never bring that stuff to work. And then I use Prestige Cleaners. This is a, a, an earth-friendly cleaner. And they come to my office, they, they, they pick up your clothes, they, you know, give you the new clothes, they take your old clothes with them, they come and pick up and drop off, and they do this on days when I'm not even in the office. He just walks in, everybody knows him, he walks in, he comes in the closet, he grabs the, the old clothes and he gives, and leaves the new ones, and they come twice a week. He comes, in my case, he comes on Mondays and Thursdays, I don't know if, you know, what their other schedule is, but... That's a huge help to me. So that's a, whole, that's a whole thing I don't have to worry about. So on my bike, just in general, equipment that I have on the frame itself, some basic um, emergency uh, pieces of equipment. So I have a bike pump. I have a little pouch underneath my seat. It's called a saddle pouch, which I keep tire irons. I keep this little, it's a foldable wrench kit that has hex, um, hex drivers, screwdriver, flathead, 
um, basically anything that would fit your bike. I have, for me, emergency stuff like my inhaler, I have my keys, um, I have a spare tube, and I have a water bottle holder. So that's just on the frame of my bike. And then when I'm commuting for work, I carry uh, what would be my Camelback backpack, but I take the water pouch out and I put in things I need for the day. So my lab notebook, my flash drive, I carry my lunch usually, so then I don't have to buy so much food because I eat a lot of food. <laughs> and then um, I have actually here clothes and um, all the other stuff that I would need. And I just tried to think ahead what I need, how much I can bring in one trip, and then carry with me just the necessities I need for that day. I use panniers. I have one here. Uh, these fit over the back bike rack on my bicycle. Um, they can carry a little or can carry a lot. They come off and on the, the back rack quite easily. I bring all my clothes that I wear. I bring food. I bring um, a full complement of tools. As I said, I haven't used them, but I've, I've loaned them on occasion out to other people. Um, and um, I also bring work back and forth on my bicycle. A lot of times if you, you, know, you don't have enough tubes or something happens, I just wait for another cyclist to come by and they'll give you a tube or help you fix your bike. And everybody kind of looks out for each other out there. Yes, I bike in winter and uh, as with any um, cold weather sport, like skiing or something like that, you layer. I, have, I, I wear several, a couple different layers of, of clothing. And I usually wear a pair of wool socks and a pair of silk socks. Uh, I went through several pairs of winter gloves before I started. I realized that the snowboarding gloves keep my fingers the warmest while I'm riding. Yeah, depending on where you live, the round trip commute from Davis to Sacramento is about 20 to 30 miles. In most cars, this will burn about at least one gallon of gasoline. That one gallon of gasoline will create 20 pounds of air pollution, of which 19 pounds is carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Therefore, if you're a commuter cyclist, every 100 commuter cyclists will save approximately a ton of pollution every day. I live in South Davis, and I work in downtown Sacramento at 10th and I. Um, the commute is 13 miles, and it takes a little less than an hour each way. I live in South Davis. It's about 14 miles from door to door. Uh, it takes me typically 45 to 55 minutes. I live in West Davis, uh, pretty close to the junior high school over there, and I work downtown at 12th and N, right across from Capitol Park, and my bike commute takes about 55 minutes. Um, I live in downtown Davis. I commute to the UC Davis Medical Center on 34th and X Street and it's about 18.2 miles and it takes me just over an hour. About an hour and seven minutes. Uh, there's an aspect to riding through the country, you know, that's, that's kind of calming and kind of gets you and kind of in touch with, with nature a little bit better. I was noticing this morning when I when I rode in across the causeway, I was noticing all the wildlife, the birds in the causeway and the wildflowers, and it's just a nice thing to observe. And rather than, than sitting in my, you know, two tons of, of metal and fighting with other people on the highway, I'm I'm cycling along and enjoying myself and and that really kind of helps set a better frame of mind for, for getting into work in the morning. Cycling does a lot to your state of mind. It allows you to be a calmer, you are have a peace and harmony with yourself and that just overflows and everything permeates, everything you touch. Work, home, children, parenting, father, everything. And it's very, very positive. To me, it's kind of like, I feel like I'm on church. I'm at church when I'm on my bike, and I'm on my bike every day, three times a day. So what does that mean? You're, you feel tranquil. You're at peace. So. Cycling gives you energy. I feel so much better when I bicycle ride. I have so much more energy at work, 
as well as patients, and I have so much more energy and patience when I get home and deal with my family. When I encounter other cyclists on the commute, it's, it's, it's as if we're part of a big brotherhood. People wave to each other, they smile. If you ever have a problem when you're, when you're bike commuting, if say you get a puncture in your tire, people always stop and help, or they at least ask if you need help. And so you feel like if you ever did have a problem that you couldn't deal with, you didn't have the right tool or whatever, chances are pretty good within five, ten minutes somebody's going to show up anyway. And most of them know how to fix problems on bikes, so it's, you feel pretty confident. You know, when you're driving on the road, everybody out there is your adversary. We're, we're taught to drive defensively, and we are taught to look out for the other guy because the other guy is, is likely to be some reckless scofflaw, and so we drive accordingly. But that is completely different than biking to work. When you commute by bicycle, all the other bicyclists, you are happy to see them. We bike in together and talk sometimes. You wave to the people that you, you bike by. But it's a community. And we appreciate the contribution that they're making by not being in their car. There's kind of, there's a little bit of a code that you, you don't ever, first of all, you never pass up a cyclist that's, that's um, on the side of the road fixing a flat or something. You always ask, how are you doing? Is everything okay? Do you have everything? Everybody knows that. I think it also helps just the tenor of the community, you see more people, you talk to more people than you would um, in a car commute, for instance, and I think that helps weave the community together uh, in a stronger fabric than if we're all driving cars. This is an opportunity to combine good health and, and environmental protection and having some fun, and you can't beat that combination. Basically, your car's no benefit to you. You know, you just sit there and get fat. <laughs> Incidents of heart disease, diabetes, hypertension would, would drop dramatically if people could just get out of their cars and onto a bicycle. Biking is a joy, and some gray-haired old guy like me can do it. Um, and there, it's interesting because the majority of the commuters that I run into are middle-aged folks like myself, and um, they've rediscovered biking. Um, some never left it, but they've rediscovered it. And there's an aspect of biking um, that, you know, I talked about the uh, ability to decompress going home and work out issues on the way to work, but there's an aspect of biking that uh, takes you back um, to your childhood. And they're just the, the feeling of being literally self-motivated and, and moving along on a vehicle that is completely under your power. And that <laughs> feeling of being on a, on a street with your friends on a bike, it's just, it's, it's, it's joyful. And um, I think that sense of joy would enhance anyone's life. This is the old Route 40 bicycle path. The land is owned by Caltrans, which has granted the city of Davis a right to use and maintain it. It is situated between Interstate 80 to the south and the Union Pacific Railroad tracks to the north and runs approximately three miles long. You rarely see anyone using this bike path during the day. And why? Because there's no useful access to it. From the west, the only access to the old Route 40 bike path is from Richards Boulevard at Olive Drive. The bike path continues east until it terminates just south of the intersection of County Road 32A and County Road 105. The only other access to the old Route 40 bike path is at Mace Boulevard from ramps that attach to the on-ramp and off-ramp of westbound Interstate 80. Otherwise, you're stuck between the freeway and the railroad tracks until you've biked out of town. Today, bicycle commuters traveling east from Davis heading towards the causeway to Sacramento have no choice but to travel in close proximity to increasing automobile traffic. Two conditions threaten increased incidents of injury to commuting bicyclists. 
First, metering lights at the on-ramps to Interstate 80 have caused more and more drivers onto the frontage roads to avoid waiting in line to access the freeway. Many cars enter the opposing traffic lane to pass cars on County Road 32A both in the morning and evening. The danger is compounded because most commuting bicyclists are biking to or from work in Sacramento during rush hour. Davis cyclists who commute to Sacramento often have the sun in their eyes going both to and from work. The sun is also in the eyes of drivers, making it harder for them to see cyclists. All of these factors increase the risk of collision between cyclists and motorists. Stefan Lorenzato knows firsthand. It was an early morning, sun was just uh, after sunrise, and I was hit from behind by a car knocked off my bike and landed quite hard on the pavement. Um, I initially thought I had broken my hip because my, I couldn't move my leg, it was paralyzed. It, that turned out to be a temporary um, condition, but I did have to get an ambulance ride to the hospital and have you know, be checked out at the emergency room. Um, it's taken me about a year and a half to recover from that. I'm not fully recovered from the accident yet. Um, I did tear up some muscle and have a lot of scar tissue in my hip as a result of hitting the ground hard. A major factor that contributed to the accident was the glare from the early morning sun. Uh, on the ride to Davis, there's glare in the morning as you ride towards Sacramento, and there's glare in the evening when you come home riding into the sunset. And uh, the sun was the first thing that the driver mentioned when she got out of her car to come check on me. Her, her comment was, oh, the light is so hard this morning. Um, and again, it wasn't anything that she was deliberately trying to do. Even good intentioned, good hearted people make mistakes and there's not a lot of room for mistakes between cars and bicycles. The second new condition threatening increased incidents of injury to cyclists is the target development at 2nd Street near Mace Boulevard, which was approved by voters in 2006. The draft environmental impact report for the target estimates an increase in traffic due to the project in the area of 2nd Street and Mace to over 10,000 car trips per day. And this will bring in drivers from outside of Davis who are not expecting the higher volume of bikes that we have on the streets. For commuting Davis bicyclists, this is a recipe for disaster, no matter which route you take to get to the causeway. There is a simple and relatively inexpensive solution, though. The simple remedy is this. Construct a bicycle ramp from the Dave Pell's overcrossing down to the old Route 40 bike path. A simple and perfect solution. This is the Dave Pell's overcrossing. Prior to construction, the project was found to be exempt from an environmental impact report. Now, the Dave Pell's overcrossing is part of the Davis bike loop. It goes over Interstate 80, and its highest arc passes the old Route 40 bike path, then descends over the Union Pacific Railroad tracks, 2nd Street, and then gently touches down on the bike path that takes you to the tunnel below 5th Street that comes up at Mace Ranch District Park. Access to the old Route 40 bike path from the Pell's Overcrossing would enable cyclists to remain separated from cars on bike paths throughout the entire north, south, and east of the city of Davis until they are well outside city limits. This access to the old Route 40 bike path would enable cyclists to completely bypass the new increased threat of traffic collisions in the vicinity of Target and much of the increased unsafe traffic on frontage roads. Everyone living east of H Street could access the old Route 40 bike path via the Davis Bicycle Loop almost entirely on bike paths apart from motor vehicle traffic. In October of 2007, the Davis Bicycle Advisory Commission at the urging of Davis Bicycles voted to amend the Davis Bike Plan to include the connector ramp from the Pell's Overcrossing to the old Route 40 bike path as a recommended capital improvement. Now we will need to take the next step. Now we need you, the citizens of Davis, to compel the Davis City Council to provide bicycle access to the old Route 40 bike path from the Pell's Overcrossing. Please let your City Council man or woman know that you want access to the old Route 40 bike path. Or you can go online at www.davisbicycles.org. <music>
I would say go with a friend and get a map and do the route beforehand. So on a weekend, go for a bike ride and just see what it's like. Maybe do it on the weekend first and give it a go. Um, see how that works. But I think what people will find is that the what they have in their mind is a lot worse than or more difficult than what it actually turns out to be. Because I've, I've done that with people where you know, they've gone their first time commuting over and they said, wow, that was easy. I think it's important to start with somebody as a partner. Try to, you know, talk to somebody that, that has, does it and, and maybe ride along with them, you know, their first time to try to, uh, you know, just kind of get broken into it. And maybe you just want to ride one way and then have somebody that you know bring you home if it seems too much, you know, and just try it a little bit at a time and, and uh, you know, even just try it one day a week and you know, see if you can build up from there. Because I think once you start doing it, you're gonna to wanna to keep doing it and you're gonna to wanna to keep doing it more than just a couple days a week. A lot of people go just one way, throw their bike on the bus coming home or they throw the bike on the bus coming in or, or they find somebody that, that uh, is commuting by car and they can throw their bike in the back of their car one way. That way you feel like it's not a overwhelming prospect to go the full distance both ways. It's for anybody, and so anybody can do this. It's not that difficult. You just gotta want to do it.